To become a Demon Slayer, you need overwhelming strength, skill, and speed, and they all do have a ranking for a reason. And to know who actually is the most powerful of them all, I went ahead and ranked every Demon Slayer there is to find out once and for all who is actually the strongest. Now before we can uncover which swordsmen are actually s rank fighters, I think we need to start things off at the beginning. I mean, it's only fair to talk about the one family that started the entire Demon Slayer core to begin with. The Ubuyashiki family is full of mystery and has a quite unique power that really sets them apart from the rest of people in the story. For one, they have incredible intuition to the point where they nearly predict the future with it and they also have a great extrasensory perception and thanks to that, through the use of their crowds and their eyes, they can actually relay information to the core faster than anyone else. In fact, without this ability, the Infinity Castle raid would not have been possible to begin with. And that makes them the ultimate team players, but unfortunately, they are also pretty average strength-wise, if not even weaker than most other Demon Slayers. And that is actually due to their family's unique disease. It makes any family member incredibly weak with time, eventually going blind, and losing the ability to even move their bodies. However, you could still argue that this is somewhat of a fair trade for the truly absolutely insane psychic abilities that they then develop and yes while technically we only see the powers used by Kagaya who is the primary family leader throughout the bulk of the series it's still a very safe assumption that all members of this family have some variation of these very special abilities but with that being said I'm still going to safely place the entire family here in the E rank I mean they aren't exactly the weakest out there but they are far from the mightiest people in the Demon Slayer world. But next up, I think it's time for a bang. So how about someone flashy? That's right. Let's talk about the Sound Hashira Tengen Uzui. He's known as the god of festivals and he has strength that can back up that quite godly title. In fact, we actually get to see more from him than basically any other Hashira out there. So getting a good idea for his strength is actually pretty easy. Thanks to his quite unique swords and ninja tools, he's an incredible incredibly fierce demon slayer with a vast arsenal of tricks up his sleeves like flash and smoke bombs and as many other people like to comment his physique makes him a force to be reckoned with for sure however still compared to some of the absolutely insane powerhouses on this list Tengen doesn't awaken to his demon slayer mark you know that little fancy tattoo that appears on some demon slayers heads well turns out that thing is a massive boost to all their stats and I'm talking about strength, speed, skill, and honestly just about everything else. And so, without one of those, it's kind of hard for him to actually crack the upper ranks of this list, which sadly means that despite being without any doubt one of the flashiest fighters out there, Tengen isn't exactly the strongest the Demon Slayer core has to offer. Regardless though, he still is a Hashira with the ability to fight and defeat an upper rank demon, and with all of that considered, I think it's very safe to say that he can comfortably sit in the B rank of our list. Yes, I know, but you'll see why. And while it might sound controversial right now, I hope you agree that the same can't be said for any of his three wives, which are Suma, Makio, and Hinatsuru. They are all formidable kunoichi in their own rights, but they really don't get the chance to do anything remarkable during the Entertainment District arc, and as a result, these three are going to end up in the D tier. And so after them, I think, let's actually shift over to some of the more dominant women in the story, and I can't think of a a better one to start with than the love Hashira Mitsuri Kandoji. Easily one of the most unique and badass Hashira, Kandoji is just an absolute menace to any demon. Her speed is absolutely insane and she's one of the most nimble fighters in the Demon Slayer core altogether. And that becomes really evident during her fight with both upper rank 4 demons. Not to mention that for some reason her physical strength is also truly out of this world. Even before she becomes a Hashira, her power was just truly unreal and she was able to lift a 15 kilogram rock when she was just one year old. And then of course, once she actually awakens her Demon Slayer mark, she's even stronger than before, handling massive stone dragons with ease and even tanking blows from Muzan himself. And knowing all of this, I do think that she easily qualifies for a 
spot in the A rank of this tier list. But of course, she's not the only super powerful woman in the Hashira ranks, no. In fact, there is another quite formidable Hashira in her own right, and her name is, of course, Shinobu, the insect Hashira. And now, while she admittedly might be a bit slower and definitely weaker physically than the love Hashira, Shinobu has a true ace up her sleeve that separates her from every other demon slayer. That's because Shinobu is, of course, a master of poisons, and her unique breathing forms capitalize on this in every possible way. Thanks to her incredibly uniquely designed sword and sheath, she's able to mix and match various poisons to infuse into her strikes and slashes with her sword. And so using these, she's actually able to single-handedly hold off the upper rank 2 demon Doma, and while she couldn't quite take him out all on her own, her trump card makes her a living weapon. Because you see, she actually infused her own bloodstream with a poison that would dismantle any demon, even an upper rank, from the inside out. In other words, it's safe to say that she is truly terrifying. However, since she has never had the chance to actually awaken her own mark, she still couldn't finish an upper rank on her own. Which means that I can safely place her with her pal Tengen in the B tier. And actually, while we're talking about Shinobu, we can probably quickly finish off the rest of the Butterfly Mansion members as well. And honestly, there's very little to say about the rest of them. While technically all of them are Demon Slayers, all of their strength is mostly focused on medicine. They're super important, but they are really weak as fighters and don't have any real feats of merit to go off of as well. And so apologies to the rest of the Butterfly Mansion, we do love you, but you're all in the F tier. But here is where it gets truly interesting, because there is one more Demon Slayer left from their ranks that is actually crazy strong, and that's of course Shinobu's adopted sister, Kano. She's of course one of the Demon Slayers in Tanjiro's entrance exam, and she actually uses a quite unique flower style of breathing. And now while not much is actually shown off her abilities early on, she is a quite fierce fighter who makes waves during the Infinity Castle arc. Doma even recognizes her true strength and speed as similar to Shinobu's, however her true saving grace and the thing that actually gives her insane strength is her final breathing form, Flower Breathing Aquinoctial Vermilion Eye, a form that at the cost of her own eyesight enhances it to give her insane accuracy while it's active. And so one way or the other, Kano is actually a quite surprisingly strong fighter and does deserve her spot in the B rank alongside her sister. And now how about we take a little detour and talk about some of the more basic Demon Slayer members, like just the average Joes that we see throughout the journey. You know, characters like Murata, Takeuchi, and Sabito are all technically Demon Slayers who do pop up throughout Tanjiro's journey. They aren't exactly anything special, but they do make their way through crazy fights and are all people who made it through the Hashira training and into the Infinity Castle arc. And I think for that feat alone, it's fair to give all of them at least a D rank. And now you might have noticed that I actually left one of them out, and his name is Masachika. Now he's actually part of the Wind Hashira's backstory, and is noted to have helped take down a former lower rank 1 demon in the past. Which means, props to you Masachika, I will toss you up in the C rank out of all the others here. And joining him in the C rank is another character also closely connected to the Wind Hashira, and that would be his younger brother, Ginya. And yeah, okay, now I hear some of you saying, Ginya, lower than Kanao? How? Uh, well, to be honest, unfortunately, Ginya just doesn't really have any results to back it up. I mean, he has arguably the most unique power set in the entire franchise, that being his ability to eat and use demon power, but unfortunately he just doesn't do anything major to contribute to any of the fights. He's never noted for immense strength or shown to do anything miraculous on his own, but I'd be a fool not to remark on his contribution in the fight against the upper rank 1 demon and the upper rank 4th fight during the Swordsmith Village arc. So I guess yeah, he could be a B rank and I would love to hear your thoughts on this in the comments, but for now, I think Genya is firmly sitting in the C tier. And seeing as I've talked about his family and friends, I do think it's time to talk about one of the all-time most broken fighters in the entire series. I'm of course talking about the Wind Hashira Sanemeshi Nazugawa. And without question, the Wind Hashira is one of 
if not the most fearsome demon slayers out there. He's literally able to go toe to toe with several top demon slayers during the Hashira training arc and even can keep up the pace with one of the most formidable demon slayers to ever live period who of course will be coming up shortly as well. And just when you thought that it couldn't get any crazier, unlike his brother, he does prove his strength time and time again. I mean, Sanami actively helps take down the upper rank one demon and Muzan during the series final battles. We also know that he rivals Gyu, the water Hashira, which makes his precision and speed something truly unrivaled by most. And because of this, Sanami is a truly fierce and powerful fighter in every sense of the term. And the wildest thing of it all, he also awakens his Demon Slayer mark and this fact alone puts him easily above most of the Demon Slayer core by default. But for whatever reason, the cracked skills just don't stop there. Because when it comes to demons, he may also be the most efficient killer there actually is. And that's because he has an extreme weapon versatility as well, as seen by him wielding both his sword and both of Genya's weapon at once during his upper rank one fight. Somehow he even wields a sword with his toes? I mean, that's crazy. I think even someone like Zoro would probably be quite jealous of his sword work here. But in the end, what really does take the cake here though is his unique blood that disorients demons and is called Marechi blood and even the smallest whiff of it immediately makes demons appear drunk or confused. And in fact, even the upper ranks themselves aren't safe from its effects. Sanami's blood also acts in response to its total concentration breathing, helping him actually stop severe bleeding faster and more efficiently than any other demon slayer. And so with all of these just absolutely insane feats considered, I think it's clear that the Wind Hashira belongs at least at the top of the A tier. And yes, I am hearing what you're wondering. How on earth is he not an S rank? I mean, you just listed some truly broken and extraordinary feats and skills in the story. I mean, if he's not an S tier, who in the world is? Well, on this list, there's actually only four of these crazy characters, and since I've kept alluding to one, I think it's time we talk about the upper rank one demon, Kokushibo. To put it simply, Kokushibo is on a whole nother level, and compared to everyone we've talked about so far, he might as well be a literal demon god. You see, Kokushibo here is actually the twin brother of the man himself who created the breathing techniques, Yoriichi. And before Kokushibo became a demon, he was already the second strongest demon slayer to ever exist in the story. Mastering his quite unique moon breathing style, Kokoshibo can overwhelm opponents with complete mastery of the total concentration breathing techniques. And then of course he somehow became even nastier as a demon. His strength is absolutely out of this world. I mean, let's face it, it took the combined efforts of the wind, Mist and Stone Hashira alongside Ginya to finally bring him down. That is three and a half Hashira just against this one guy. Now sure, I mean his blood demon art and his demon and body put him above the others, but it's actually a secret technique that lets Kokushibo stand above the rest here. And that hidden art, it's called the Transparent World. You see, it turns out that the Transparent World is actually the single most busted technique in all of Demon Slayer. It's a technique only available to Demon Slayers who actually have awakened their Demon Slayer mark, and with it, Kokushibo can basically see beyond just the outer world. That means that his senses overflow and allow him to see things like muscles, organs, blood flow, and even breathing, and because of that, he can actually read people's movements and intentions at a speed beyond anyone else. And so it's because of all of these absolutely broken techniques and abilities why it's clear that Kokoshibo is actually an S rank demon slayer. And now with that being said, I do think it's fair to just get his twin brother out of the way as well because Yoruichi is practically the god of demon slayers in general. I mean, as I mentioned earlier, he is the original creator of the breathing techniques to begin with and mastered the original form of sun breathing. This alone does separate him already from all the rest, but what makes him the supreme demon slayer in general, that he was also born with the mark that gave him access to the transparent world his entire life. And because of that, from the first time he picked up a blade, 
he was automatically a godlike swordsman. Basically, everything that makes his older brother Kokushibu an S rank is already present within Yorichi. Honestly, he goes way even beyond that. He actively defeated Muzan in the past one on one and lived on to train and pass on his techniques down to all of the other original Hashira. Transparent worlds, Demon Slayer marks, breathing techniques. If you can think of any crazy ability in the Demon Slayer world, he has mastered it. After all, he is the creator of it all. So yeah, now that we've covered two of these four iconic swordsmen, let's shift back to the modern day with our next two Demon Slayers, the Serpent and Mist Hashiras, Obanai and Muichiro. And yeah, why not? Let's start with the Serpent Hashira Obanai. He is an incredibly stealthy and loose fighter with a quite unique blade that bends and wraps itself around in ways that mimic a snake constricting its opponents. As a result, his nimble but quite powerful fighting style does help him easily hold off an upper rank 4 demon without too much effort. But of course, his greatest contribution is actually during the fight against Muzan, where I think it goes without saying, he literally showed his worth. Activating both his mark and accessing the transparent world briefly at least, he is a true handful for even Muzan to deal with. And so while we may not see a whole lot of him early on in the series, the final battle alone puts his strengths on display for everyone to see. But before we're gonna give Obanai his ranking, I do want to talk about a fighter who matches his strength, the Mist Hashira. Now while we meet Muichiro during the Swordsmith Village arc, his real moment to shine is actually during his battle with Kokushibo. And that's because we do find out that Muichiro is actually his descendant? What? That is truly insane, but very true. That means that Muichiro carries the literal blood of the greatest demon slayers in existence, and let's be real, it really shows. Not only has he awakened his own mark, but he also has briefly tapped into the transparent world, and while only briefly, it did give him a crucial leg up to help defeat Kokushibo alongside the other Hashira. In other words, to put it simply, these two Hashira do match each other in strength, feats, and experience, and to me it's clear that they both belong in the top levels of the A rank. Actually leaving only one spot here in the A tier, and I do wonder who that's gonna be. But before we get to that, I think we should round out the C rank tier with all of the former Hashira that we know about. They are are Sakonji, the water Hashira that actually trains Gyu and Tanjiro, Jigaro, the former Thunder Hashira and Zainzu's grandfather, Shinjiro, the former Flame Hashira and Rengoku's father, and then finally Kanae, the former Flower Hashira and the older sister of Kanao and Shinobu. And now here's the deal, they are all fantastic swordsmen in their own right, and honestly, I'm sure that if they were part of a modern day era here, they would easily be in the B or A ranks. However, they just never really had to deal with any of the insane threats that all the others on this list have had. Basically, they all lived to be way older or died way younger, and none of them ever defeated an upper rank demon, so it's not quite possible to rank them any higher, I think, than the C rank for this list. Which means that we're coming close to revealing the final two strongest demon slayers, but we've got a few fighters left, so now I think it's time we shift to some of our main characters next. Starting with Inosuke, the beast breathing behemoth. Basically, Inosuke's quite unique animalistic behavior and insane flexibility give him a true leg up on everyone that he does seem to fight. Able to literally dislocate his joints at will, yikes, to uh, extend his attacks, or contort his entire body, he has gone toe to toe with some of the fiercest demons in the entire series. Basically, defeating lower rank and upper rank demons alike, and going so far as to help defeat upper rank to and be a serious aid in defeating Muzan himself. Not only that, but his uniquely serrated blades allow for him to truly shred through his opponents in a way unlike any of the other Demon Slayers do. He's also got a quite unique poison resistance that makes him last significantly longer against certain harsh blood demon arts, not to mention he is just insanely freakishly strong. 
He is truly unruly, but since he lacks a Demon Slayer mark, he is limited in his true potential as a Demon Slayer. And for that reason, I do think that at the end of the series, Inosuke surely belongs in the B rank alongside his comrade Zenitsu, that is. You see, Zenitsu truly is a marvel of speed, mastering the thunder breathing first form, thunderclap, and flash. And through mastery of this form, he has actually created sub variations that allow him to defeat and overwhelm his opponents with his godlike agility. He even develops a seventh form of the thunder breathing style, Hono Ikazuchi no Kami, or Flaming Thunder God. He may not have fully mastered the breathing form, but his pinpoint mastery of a couple of techniques is really all he needs to actually contribute quite a lot in the fight against Muzan. But despite all these quite insane feats throughout the story, Zenitsu also does in the end not awaken a Demon Slayer mark, and while he does manage to defeat an upper rank demon by himself, even he acknowledges that he was kind of lucky with the timing of that fight. In other words, if the demon hadn't been brand new to his abilities, he surely would have been defeated. And because of these facts, B rank is probably as far as he would go. And actually, now that I've brought him up, let's quickly talk about Kaigakuru. He's basically the upper rank 6 demon that Zenitsu defeated, and that's because he is also a former demon slayer and fellow student of the thunder breathing technique alongside Zenitsu. However, very much unlike Zenitsu, he mastered every form of thunder breathing except the first form, which basically made all of his techniques just way weaker by comparison. After all, without a strong foundation, even the most advanced moves can't reach their full potential, which is exactly why Zenitsu is actually able to single-handedly defeat him during the Infinity Castle arc. And now, that being said, he is still an upper rank demon and immensely powerful, which is why I have him alongside those two in the B rank as well. And actually, I guess we can also briefly talk about our our last demon-like demon slayer, Nezuko, because if we were to place her, it would be here alongside Inosuke and Zenitsu as well, I think. It's kind of hard to place her with the rest of the demon slayers because, well, she truly is just a demon that doesn't utilize any of the training of the demon slayers, but does ally herself with them, so I guess we can throw her in here. And between her immensely powerful kicks and quite unique flame blood demon art, it's kind of safe to say that she belongs here alongside her comrades in the B tier. Which means that now we just have four Demon Slayers remaining, one B tier, one A tier, and two S tier fighters. Go ahead, take your guess now who is going to rank where, and you may be surprised by the results in the end. And without any more waiting here, let's talk about the clear fan favorite, Rengoku the Flame Hashira. Because he is without any question one of the most powerful Hashira prior to the Hashira training arc. Going toe to toe and nearly defeating Akaza by himself without a Demon Slayer mark during the Mugen train arc is actually insane in retrospect. He's a true master of the fire breathing style and has an unparalleled fighting spirit, but despite this, he, much like some of our other fan favorites, doesn't live long enough enough to see his full potential realized. Like genuinely, I have no doubt that if he had actually managed to survive until the end of the series, he would have actually been an s rank fighter, but since his journey ends so quickly, Rengoku does round out our B tier here. And since that's the case here, it does open up the final A tier spot for the Water Hashira Gyu. And I mean, that should have been obvious because the water obviously beats fire, guys, am I right? Nobody? Anyways, it's clear that since the beginning of the series, Gyu was already set up to be one of the most formidable members of the Demon Slayer core. Serving as Tanjiro's inspiration and generally dominating everyone who we see him interact with prior to the Infinity Castle arc. But once we make it there is where he truly shines. Awakening his Demon Slayer mark, he helps defeat the upper rank 3 Akaza alongside Tanjiro and goes on to be a driving force behind defeating Muzan. So yeah, he may be a bit of a quiet guy, but his strength is very loud and clear. Which means that this leaves us now with our last two S rank spots, and the first of which is going to be the strongest Hashira without any doubt. 
Gyome Himejima. The oldest and most formidable of all the Hashira, Gyome absolutely decimates everyone and everything that he seems to fight. Whether it's Kokushibo or Muzan, he shows up and literally wreaks havoc with his stone breathing form. He's a true titan of a man towering over everyone with a nearly perfect body according to Muzan and Kokushibo alike. And you know who needs a fancy Nichiren sword when you can just use a giant spiked ball and chain axe made of pure steel to just obliterate your opponents, am I right? But beyond just this, Gyome, much like our other s -rank characters, has full access to both the Demon Slayer mark and the transparent world. And with both of these techniques, it's really no wonder that he's considered the strongest Hashira by just about everyone in the universe. Which means that it's now finally time to talk about the main character of the story, Tanjiro Kamado. And I think it's only fair that he wraps out our list here as the final S-rank character. I mean, let's be real, he's essentially the second coming of Yoriichi, mastering the Hinokami Kagura, otherwise known as the sun breathing style, as well as wielding his own Demon Slayer mark and access to seeing the transparent world. Oh, let's not forget that he also takes on several upper rank demons and is the ace in the whole fight against Muzan. And he's even recognized by the king of demons himself as the strongest at the end of their battle. And I do think it goes without saying that by the end, Tanjuro is the greatest demon slayer to have ever existed, but to really understand where all of that strength and all those techniques actually come from, you do need to know his tragic backstory, which is why I do recommend that you check out this video right here next, because I explain literally the backstory of every shonen protagonist in anime, and spoiler alert, Tanjiro's is kind of brutal. Otherwise, if you enjoyed this video, please do press all the buttons below, like, share, subscribe, all these things. I mean, it's annoying, but it does make a huge difference in helping this channel take off and grow. It's still pretty small, as you can see, and I do have some truly crazy videos coming up in the future. Otherwise, thanks so much for watching, and hopefully I'll see you uh, in the next one here.